Growing up, there were two types of motorcycles. There were Harleys or there were Triumphs. The Harleys were associated with kind of the rough crowd, but the Triumphs were associated with the cool guys. Steve McQueen rode a Triumph. Um, Warren Beatty rode a Triumph. Uh, Marlon Brando rode a Triumph. The Triumphs were, in my opinion, the cooler bikes. So it became natural that as I got older and could spend the time and spend the money to do this, it was all going to all be about Triumphs. I came up with an idea of using the newer Triumph Bonneville motors to create a street tracker style motorcycle that could be ridden every day. It had great power, lightweight, and wouldn't leak oil and it had an electric start on it. In working out how to build that type of a motorcycle, I was put in touch with Rich Pollock at Mule Motorcycles and we came up with the design of a new street tracker motorcycle. It's about 300 pounds, it has about 75 horsepower, and it trades off lightweight for performance. It's, it's a great motorcycle to ride. We took it to the Quail Motorcycle Gathering up in Monterey, California. And while I was there, I was introduced to Terry Cargus. I ended up meeting Richard Varner and, and loving what he was doing. And, and Richard and I discussed having SoCal Speed Shop interpret a flat track racer for the street. Terry had a long-lived passion for motorcycles and motorsports as well. And we found a common interest, and that was to build a really special motorcycle, motorcycle parts, apparel, every aspect of, of the motorcycle culture. I was at Roush for 17 years, and through that met SoCal Speed Shop. And actually, we were selling them engines, uh, big crate motors for their, their hot rods, and spent some time out there. And Terry's idea was that we take that long-term relationship and turn it towards motorcycles. We got introduced to Richard Varner through a mutual friend. Richard had already started this company, Champions Moto, and had this idea for this bike. They already built a couple prototypes. And so we came up with the idea of creating a hot rod motorcycle. And he was looking to have something that was a bit of a hot rod and a bit of a motorcycle, uh, something that would be, could be run on the, on the mile. So he came to us with an idea, wanting to take it to the next level, and kind of use some of SoCal's design concepts and really refine their whole movement in this, in this bike industry. We didn't know really where we wanted to go. So Terry and I met with Pete and Jimmy and talked about kind of the styling cues. We sat down, we had a group meeting. It was a real meeting of the minds, you know, and everybody's working, you know, collectively to to achieve this one project. They took that discussion and they went to, to Alberto Hernandez, a, a very well-known designer, renderer, sculptor that does a lot of work with hot rods and, and automobiles and prototyping and design. Basically, the design process starts with drawings. We do a full blow up of the bike on a profile. By having somebody like Alberto Hernandez on our team to actually draw and as we're, as we're describing the idea we have in our head, he can actually draw it. And then we can describe to him like, no, change this a little here or a little there. We put together some final drawings of what we wanted the motorcycle to look like. From there, we had to go to three dimensions. The next process is to make a 3D out of it. And usually that takes clay and foam to do that. It's all hand carved. We brought in a, a frame with a motor and Alberto put clay on there and started modeling the clay. It's so hard to make something out of metal and hit it right the first time, but clay is such an easy medium to work with. And you know, somebody like Alberto, as we're standing there looking at the bike, he can actually shape it. We're like, ah, we're a little fat in this area. We want to shave this down. We're lean over here. We want to add some. And we can actually get all of our proportions exactly right. So then once we have that and everybody's signed off on the dimensions of it, we like the shape, the size, we actually take those pieces and we get them digitized. We actually scan them and then that's turned into a wooden buck and the wooden buck performs its duty as the piece that you hammer the aluminum over. This is the exact same size of our original clay model. It's a pretty awesome process. I 
All the custom pieces that came off of the bucks would include the tank, which was made in three pieces and welded together. The back fender is in two pieces and it's welded together and the side covers and the, and the seat frame. So everything that's on the outside of the bike, the visual is all handmade aluminum. I think the bike just absolutely turned out beautiful. You know, like, like any good project, I mean, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of people, a lot of money to make this thing happen. The Myler as an interpretation of a hot rod has all of the sounds and looks and appeal of everything you would expect in a real badass hot rod. I think it's got a wonderful aesthetic. We kind of went back into the history of Milers and came up with this, what I think is a 2013 version of a 1956 Myler. SoCal does 250 to $500,000 uh, high boy roadsters, so you can imagine the finishes and the things that they did on this bike. It's, it's really a piece of art. We really founded a really good relationship, a friendship with Mr. Varner and SoCal Speed Shop. And I think the bike just turned out beautiful. We really enjoyed this build. I mean, it was, it was stunning. Richard was a wonderful customer. The company we worked with, his people were really great. And out of that came this Roadster, which uh, he bought from us. So everything's really good. At this point, this is the only bike that we've actually worked on with uh, Richard Varner. And uh, he's taking it to the next level now, bring it into the mass market. Uh, mass production, or at least a limited production. I think he wants to do a run of like 25 of these motorcycles. But this one right here is number one. The whole concept from the beginning was to create a platform. From there, we took some of those same pieces, uh, for example, the seat and the side covers, and we developed those to build a cafe racer with certain modifications. Richard uh, built this bike at his shop and used the back half of the tin off of the Myler to build this bike, and it really came out sweet. Now, cafe racers have gone through a, a, a number of changes over the years. There's about three different eras for cafe racers. We decided to target sort of the, the early 60s style, or kind of a clubman style. We uh, created what we call the Brighton. Now the Brighton was another bike. We wanted to do another Triumph and, and Richard decided that what he wanted to do was an old school Triumph using a current engine. And so uh, using the, the SoCal model seat, which we thought was perfection, Richard took an old school uh, Triumph tank, stretched it so that it would fit on the frame uh, properly, which is also a frame that, that Richard has developed called a Streetmaster frame. And then he took an old school paint job and a branding, badging job from a Triumph, an original Triumph, and recreated that on it. It's one of the most photographed and, and uh, published bikes that, that you've ever seen. One thing we wanted to do is create a, an older look, and with that, we felt that meant we had to have drum brakes. First of all, that was the epitome of performance at this point in time. It keeps the bike true to the era. It also has just a great look to it. And, and lastly, if it's set up correctly, it can stop you almost as well as a disc brake can. So what I found is people love it or they hate it. And I'm finding more and more people love it because it's unique. It's not what everyone else sees. The drum brakes really set this motorcycle off, uh, something different. We had a vision of this style motorcycle being popular with people not only of our own age but, but younger as well. The original equipment manufacturers, Honda, Ducati, Triumph, have all created motorcycles with retro styling. And it's pretty obvious that people yearn for that. So it's been a real pleasure to be able to design and build something that other people like and they really get. They see it right away and they go, I get it. Uh, that's a great motorcycle. What's even more fun is to ride these motorcycles and then go back and ride one of the older ones and see how much the industry has come. And, but, the, but the feeling's the same because the riding position and where your hands are and the uh, response, it, it, it's all very similar. You can tell the DNA from one to the next. I 
I don't even know if passion's a good word, but that's what I've got for motorcycles and hot rods. I mean, honestly, there's nothing, there's not a bigger thrill to me than that at speed in an open roadster where, you know, you've got the wind and the, and the sound and all of the, the engine noise. And likewise, motorcycles, the same thing. It's even more personal. The thing that's neat about these four wheel hot rods is you can have somebody sitting next to you instead of yelling over your shoulder. It's funny, it's like, you know, I, I build a lot of bikes and I, I love my Harleys and Triumphs and all that, but I just sold my Panhead. My Panhead actually went to Italy. But there's one bike I won't sell, and that's my CRF 450. That's my two wheel freedom machine, man. There's nothing better than getting out in the desert and just hauling ass doing a wheelie, you know, in fifth gear. It's just too cool. I don't know. That's probably one of my favorite bikes.